Back on Local 6 Midday, another edition of Local 6 Legal Line, visiting with Emily Roark of the Bryant Law Center, Paducah, Mayfield, and Louisville. Your criminal defense questions answered at one 206 I have a question from an anonymous viewer who says, if I've only had one drink and get pulled over, should I still refuse a breathalyzer test, even though I believe I would test below a .8? If, if you've only had one drink and you believe you're under a .08, then um, my advice to you would probably be to go ahead and take the breathalyzer. But, you know, we get a lot of those calls that we've only had one drink and people misjudge how much they've had to drink. So make sure you've only had one drink and it hasn't been two or three or four and you just didn't keep count. But if it's only been one drink, it's not against the law to drink and drive. It's against the law to drink and drive when you're under the influence. So I would tell you if you've only had one drink, go ahead and take that breathalyzer. You should be okay. Now, and, and a minute ago it said 0.8. I think at 0.8 you might be legally dead, but it's 0.08. Exactly. Is what, it, yes. what it is. Good catch there. Thank okay. You. Now, the next question comes from someone who says if an officer smells marijuana in my car, do I have the right to refuse a car search? Well, yes, you always have a right to refuse a car search, and I would always tell you to never give an officer um, permission to search your vehicle under any circumstances, no matter what they smell, see, or otherwise. Um, I don't care what an officer says they smell, what they say a dog says that they, a dog sniffs, or what the circumstances are. Don't give an officer permission to search your home, your vehicle, your person, or anything else. If they want to get a warrant, if they want to search, then you're going to waive any reason whatsoever um, to um, suppress that, to challenge that, if you give them permission to get into your vehicle, your home, or your person. So never give anyone permission, especially an officer, I don't know who else you'd be given permission, to search your car, your person, or your home. I have a little over a minute left in today's first segment, and someone says, I recently had an automobile accident. The other driver got out of their car and started yelling uh, very loudly, using very offensive language toward me. Is verbal assault something that I can charge them with? Yes, I mean, verbal assault is, it depends on what the verbal assault is. It could be terroristic threatening. If they threaten to harm you physically, that would be terroristic threatening. If it's just um, loud screaming and other people around, it would be disorderly conduct. There are multiple different charges that you could charge someone with uh, for screaming at you. Um, if someone's just upset and, and angry because you had an accident, uh, maybe they thought your driving was bad, um, I doubt you're probably going to get someone to charge them. But if they're threatening you or if they're just calling a terrible scene and using bad vulgar language, then there is a possibility you might be able to bring charges against them. Got about 20 seconds left. Real quickly, how long does a DUI stay on your criminal record? Can do that easily. 10 years. 10 years from the date that it happened, not from the date you pled. And there's no way around that. Can't get expunged, can't do anything about it. So. That's a relatively new law, it used to be five, now it's 10. That's a long time. Emily Roark, our guest today on part one of today's Local 6 Legal Line. Kevin uh, Shannon will be in the hot seat next and we'll be talking about personal injury. That's part two of Legal Line straight ahead on Local 6 Midday.